from Liberty Park. Um, <clears throat> this Granite State Futures Plan, I want to urge you to vote this down. This was a very vague uh, presentation that came to uh, a few meetings ago about sustainable communities. I visited the planning board three times trying to obtain this commission, this uh, information, and uh, I was told there was no info available. It's like pulling teeth trying to find out about this, and when I, when I heard that word sustainable, it really got me interested. I ended up finding on the internet, and you ought to watch, look at this because we're signing on to a big commitment here. Peeling back the onion on comprehensive rezoning helped, was very helpful to me um, with discovering some of these agendas that are being put forward. I, I took some quick notes off of this uh, Grand Estate Future material, which has a three-year timeline. They talk about livability principles, public health, climate change, energy efficiency, sustainable de development, compact development patterns, smart growth, vibrant village programs, early childhood education. They employ the Carsey Institute from UNH to out outreach to underserved part of populations. Underserved and marginal populations are, are lifted to an altar in this plan. What's this all about anyway? You know, we hear that this is an entitlement city. I'm sorry, I'm tired of this stuff. These are minorities and I'm not gonna, I, 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 I object to this in our city. You know, they use this action media for community engagement techniques, i.e. facilitation, i.e. propaganda. You're talking about nonprofits involved with this, quasi-governmental agencies and special interests. What about land use? This is about social engineering here. Last Friday, they had a meeting of the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. Representative Newton attended. Planner Mark Sullivan, he's not clear on what this plan is. But one thing they're, they're looking to do is find out why people move here. We need to be spending money on this stuff. This, to me, boils down to one thing. It's central planning, one size fits all. It's failed everywhere it's been implemented, whether it's USSR, Chairman Mao with their multi-year plans. I dare you to show me anywhere, anywhere in the world where it's ever worked. The planning really, well, let's face it, they're behind the times. If you have a vibrant free market, people are going to make the choices that are, that are going to be better and timely decisions. What happens is, you guys ought to read this, because as counselors, you're going to end up ceding power to the regional planners, okay? By signing this, we'll be signing on to HUD rules. This is a contract here. It's very serious. 
I urge you to kill this plan. We do not need this plan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for hearing my testimony. I have laryngitis, so I only need about a minute. <clears throat> you just state your name. Uh, my name is Ed Camo, C-O-M-E-A-U. I am a resident of Brookfield, not Rochester, and I'm also Brookfield's representative to the Stratford Regional Planning Commission. I'm also a member in alternate to the Brookfield Planning Board. <coughs> I present my public testimony in reference to the Granite State Future Agreement. I am strongly opposed to the federal involvement in, the, in town planning. As of today, the federal government is running a deficit that is well over 100% of our gross domestic product. The Congress approval rate now is less than 10% and due to the clear fact that the federal government cannot run itself, the Department of Housing and Urban Development is suffering the same condition. The Sustainable Cities Initiative is rooted in President Obama's Executive Order 13575, which states that they are going to coordinate federal efforts directed towards the growth and development of geographic regions that encompass both urban and rural America. HUD is listed as one of the departments to further this goal, along with EPA. The federal government is overstepping its bounds and it is asserting itself where it is not meant to be. If you sign this legal agreement, you are advertently inserting the federal government between the citizen and their local representatives. The documents within this binder prove that the agreement is not a grassroots, locally controlled product. There are stipulations within the agreement and HUD documents that point to a top-down, centrally planned and steered process of local planning. The planning commissions have also hired a PR company that the gentleman before me mentioned, known as Action Media, to sell this initiative. I find this blatantly dishonest. Our constitutional republic requires a rapport between the citizen and the representatives, not a PR company. Do not sign this agreement without doing your due diligence to investigate. If you review the information I have provided, you will agree there are far too many strings attached and the future of Rochester is in your hands because Brookfield will not accept this, and I don't believe you should either. It's very important that you do your due diligence and investigate this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public questions to address council? My name is Robert Gates. I am very much opposed to this sustainability program. I, I see it as hired, or, or hired bureaucrats <coughs> controlling what we do in our city relative to planning our city. I think the planning board in this city is capable of doing appropriate planning for the citizens of Rochester. We don't need to listen to some bureaucrat in some other part of the state. I can go to a planning board member in this city, talk that, to them face to face, and get my point across. All this does is add another layer of bureaucracy that people like me and other homeowners and property owners in this city will have to navigate to them, and it's a pain in the backside. Keep planning here in Rochester. We don't need a regional planning. If you're unhappy with the planning board, then we'll put some other members on it. But keep the planning local. This has given up our sovereignty, and I'm vehemently opposed to it. I understand Wyndham, New Hampshire, is opposed to this too. And this action media company that's been mentioned a couple of times use what's called Delphi techniques. Look that up sometime and read about how that is manipulative and gets a consensus <laughs> by manipulation. Read about it and see what you think of it. If sustainability through regional planning is so good for the residents of Wyndham or any town in New Hampshire, why do these planning commissions need to hire a PR company that is an expert at the Delphi technique to propagandize the people to join? And that's exactly what will happen. Do not go down this road. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
Good evening, everyone. My name is Mary Hubbard. I'm visiting your great city from the neighboring city of Dover, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you tonight on this matter. Uh, one quick comment. The gentleman who spoke before me about the Delphi technique is absolutely right about that being a control method. I've actually experienced the Delphi technique, and I went into a meeting knowing it was going to be perpetrated on the participants, and it was so strong, I almost got sucked into it as well. We had it in Dover when we were going through our visioning process for our Dover uh, 2023 master plan. Um, but I would like to uh, address you tonight about the Sustainable Communities Initiative that you're considering. And I would ask you to imagine that there's a table on the Diaz in front of you. And on that table is a big hypodermic syringe full of cancer. What you are doing tonight is considering picking up that syringe. And I would tell you that the testimony that you will hear tonight from individuals of communities that have not only picked up that syringe, but injected that cancer known as Sustainable Communities Initiative into the bloodstream of their communities have had incredibly devastating effects. And so our mission tonight and I stand in support with the citizens of Rochester, is to tell you to leave that syringe on the table. I would imagine, um, with all you've been through lately, that you have heard of Agenda 21, and it has many names and many disguises. It's known as sustainable development, smart growth, sustainable initiatives like you're going through tonight. We're dealing with a scenic byway corridor in Dover, which is also an Agenda 21 matter. And um, my husband, Rick, has invited Rosa Corey, the author of Behind the Green Mask, Agenda 21. She's a nationally known speaker. He's invited her to come to New Hampshire. She will be coming at the end of June. I personally would like to invite each and every one of you and as many constituents who would like to attend. She has a series of presentations that she will be giving uh, around the state. I have a flyer that I'll be passing out to you for information. The closest one to Rochester is actually going to be at our Elks Lodge in Dover. It's on Route 108. It's going to be on Sunday, June 24th at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. There will be questions and answers afterward. We, I would just strongly urge you to come and educate yourself about what sustainable development really is on behalf of your constituents, because this is an issue that's not going away. I happen to have four copies of Rose's book. I'm happy anyone who would like it tonight, and I have more. I just did not bring them with me tonight. If you're interested, please let me know, and I would be happy to get those to you. Um, I, I can't say strongly enough, please do not sign on to this initiative. Thank you for the opportunity tonight. Good evening. My name is Ken Irene. Thank you for the ability to speak to you tonight. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention about the... Yeah, I'm sorry, did you just repeat your name for Yes, it's Ken Irene. Okay. And you are from? I'm from Windham. Windham. Yes. So thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. This issue is not only um, important to Rochester or our state, but this is occurring across our country. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention about the uh, each regional planning commission is that they are comprised of many committees. Uh, if you did sign this agreement, you have no assurances that you will be represented on any of those committees. Uh, the thing that, one of the issues I'd like to talk about tonight is that in the legal, legally binding agreement, that's HUD's words, uh, there are many, many references to Section 808E5 of the Fair Housing Act. Uh, that is that is the Fair Housing Act references that uh, the, an analysis of impediments, uh, which is uh, a review document, a review of impediments or barriers that affect the rights of fair housing choice. And it covers a bunch of the different issues uh, based on race, color, uh, religion, sex, and uh, so on. Uh, that's important to understand because uh, our state uh, has, uh, in 2010, has a 2010 New Hampshire analysis of impediments. Uh, that will be used 
uh, and be incorporated into the Granite State Future Agreement. That was written by the NHLA. Um, they were hired by the NHHFA, which as part of the Granite State Future Agreement, the NHHFA will assure the uh, analysis of impediments will conform to the 2010 New Hampshire analysis of impediments. And I'm bringing all this up, uh, but I, I want to make it clear that the NHLA uh, is the organization that is behind the impetus for the New Hampshire Workforce Housing Block. They sued uh, quite a few municipalities and won. And <clears throat> now the Fair Housing Act, as I said, is listed throughout in many sections of the uh, legally binding agreements. And uh, it was the Fair Housing Act that was used as a reason to sue uh, the, the Westchester County, New York. Now this was under a different HUD grant, but it was under the, the uh, unjust claim that they did not conform to the Fair Housing Act. Uh, a single individual created a nonprofit organization by using demographic data, such as GIS data, uh, they claimed that because Westchester County was only 70% Caucasian, they were de facto segregated. Uh, HUD stepped in on their behalf. They took over the lawsuit, and um, the previous uh, county executive uh, decided to settle instead of pursue it. The current county executive from the beginning was against it and voiced his concerns. Uh, they settled for $51.6 million dollars to build 750 units in 31 so-called eligible or mostly white communities over seven years. They got more than, the, with the new county executive, they got over a year ahead of schedule. And I'm gonna read, some of the things I'm gonna read now are from uh, an op-ed written by the county executive. Uh, by its own admission, HUD is demanding the county go beyond the four corners of the settlement. So they, they were asking for changes in the middle of the game after the settlement had, be signed, had been signed. HUD's approach is to unilaterally move the goalposts in the middle of the game. Its technique is to repeatedly reject a routine document called an analysis of impediments. The settlement calls on the county to submit an AI that's acceptable to HUD. The purpose of the AI is to outline obstacles to fair housing choice, which the county has done. Prior to the settlement, HUD had never rejected an AI by the county, but now we're, we are up to five rejections. Now, just to put all this in context, if Westchester were a state, it would be the seventh most diverse in terms of Hispanic representation and 14th most diverse in terms of African American representation. Critics say that white, that while Westchester is diverse, its African American and Hispanic residents are not evenly distributed throughout the county. True, but why? The forces at work here are economic, not racial discrimination. People have a right to live anywhere they like in Westchester, and, and it's a right I stand ready to enforce to the full extent of the law. Where people live depends on the home they can afford. There are lots of homes in Westchester I would like to own, but I can't afford. That's not discrimination, that's economics. Evidence of HUD's overreach includes the following unjustified demand, that the county dismantle local zoning laws, a power HUD knows full well the county does not possess as New York is a home rule state. The specific zoning practices which must be addressed include limitations on the size, type, and number of developments in a community, lot size and density, and the number of bedrooms in a unit. In other words, all zoning. Can I take 30 more seconds? 30 more seconds. Thank you, sir. After the settlement, Deputy Se the de then Deputy Secretary, Secretary of HUD, Ron Sims, declared that he was very happy with the settlement and that they would use that as a test case and it will be used as a model across the country to further enforce fair housing. I want to remind you the NHLA wrote the 2010 analysis of impediments and they have been around suing municipalities to enforce it. So if and thank you very much. Thank you. Council Level. Thank you. Um, I had trouble uh, following Yes, absolutely. Um, would, 
Is there an uh, email if, if address? If you hand it out, we'll make sure the city clerk gets it and we'll have copies of it. Oh, Thank terrific. You. Any other member of the public question just now? You have that document in an email I sent to the council. Oh, okay. So if you take the time to read my email, it's in there. Yes. Um, and, and more, obviously. I'm anything but brief most times, but I'm definitely uh, I'm definitely uh, detailed. Uh, Fred Leonard, East Rochester. Uh, I'm not going to rehash what, what you heard, but I just want you to remember the Neighborhood Stabilization Program. Um, and how uh, the information when that uh, program was, was, was initially presented to you was, was less than, um, well, it was less than complete, let's put it that way. And how a year or so later you discovered that it was less than complete, uh, certainly misrepresented and mischaracterized, and you then found yourselves uh, sometime after that uh, not allowing the city to go forward um, accepting more money or allowing the application to apply for more money. The other thing, when your, your comment was made that you had gotten all the information that's been provided, well, no, you have not. And again, remember Neighborhood Stabilization Program. Uh, some folks here talked about a couple of different uh, forms, one of which is the uh, HUD document, um, Form HUD-1044, which is part of this. This, this legally binding contract, which uh, which you're about to vote on, and there's some things in here that talks. This is the, the, this document is the assistant the assistance award amendment, okay? And there's some things in here that, that really uh, stick out. Substantial involvement. When HUD talks about substantial involvement, let me tell you what they talk about. It's anticipated uh, substantial involvement by HUD staff may include, but will, but will not be limited to uh, stu to studies and reports. It says review and provide recommendations on the final report or study, including final interpretation of study results. Under approvals and reviews, authority to halt all activity if specifications uh, or work statements are not met. Um, also under approvals and review, review and approve of key personnel. So they can, they can pick and choose who they want involved with this thing. Uh, participation, uh, participation and monitoring, implementing HUD requirements which limit recipient discretion. We'd be the recipient, they would limit our discretion. Therefore, that you would be giving up some of your authority and control as a city council and as a region. Um, that's that one document. There's another one called the Notice of Funding Availability. These are all part of the Sustainable uh, Communities Initiative. These are the legally binding documents that you compel uh, this region and this city to, which could lead to things like what happened in Westchester County, which we don't want. The Notice of Funding Availability talks about socioeconomic um, inequality. Applicants, applicants are required to document measures of segregation and school poverty by participating community and by region. Economic, economic opportunity. Applicants are required to document the availability of subsidized housing within two miles of the region's five largest employment centers. So not only are we giving away some of our rights, but then they're telling us exactly what information they want us to spend time culling from our communities. Fresh food access. Applicants should document the proportion of the regional population isolated from fresh quality food options as measured by the proximity of full-service grocery stores to low-income and auto-dependent household. I'll bet nobody can just repeat what I just said. What the hell's that mean? Uh, it goes on and on and on. This, again, is stuff that I sent to you. This is not, this isn't a joke. This is real. These are HUD documents. They're telling us that they're going to involve themselves in our business the moment we give them permission to do so. Okay? So you did not receive all the documentation. Our legal counsel has not reviewed these legally binding documents, and you can't go forward with approving this. This should, be, this should die tonight. This should never go forward. Even when you review it, there's no possible way you could actually sign on to this. Um, and then the other thing, which right from the very beginning in the, the beautiful letter that was waved to you that meeting, I remember, was the only thing presented. Hey, sign off on this until somebody pushed for more information. You got a little bit more 
but not quite all of them. Okay? And the people, what about us? Don't we have an opportunity to understand what this thing's all about before you commit, it to it, commit us to it? That was all part of the letter. <coughs> hey, get the people involved, especially the underrepresented people. Where's that process? It hasn't even begun. Same thing with neighborhood stabilization program. None of this stuff is done. It's never communi communicated to the community like HUD tells you to do. Okay, so we don't even get we don't even get out of the gate in the proper fashion. So that in and of itself is not fair. Um, it requires you to vote this thing down tonight, in my in my opinion. And then last hill, one last comment. Go ahead. The comment was made by uh, one of the members of the, the council that says, well, this is just an advisory only commission. Well, if it's advisory only, why do they want you to sign a legally binding contract? What's going on here? Ask yourself that question. If it's advisory only, why do they want you to sign a legally binding document? Where they need 50% of the communities in each region and 500,000 people, represented people statewide, to be eligible to get money. That's why the information is not forthcoming, because people want to be able to do what they want to do and not tell the truth about what they're doing. This is not good for this community, and you folks know this. You know this in your heart. You need to vote this thing down tonight, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other member of the public wish to address council? Brady Bowen, Connor. Um, I'll be very brief. This is redistribution of wealth. Um, it's being forced upon us, and I urge every counselor to reject this immediately. If there's something good in it, we can do it our, on our own as a city. We don't need to sign any contract. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public? My name is Mona Peralt. I live on the top of Chesley Hill. And I came here specifically tonight for this issue. I'm not going to repeat everything you've heard, but I know there's a lot more where that came from. I'm asking you to kill this tonight, or at least table it, and really do the research, because this is a very serious matter. This isn't what it looks like on the surface. It is far-reaching, and it would not be good for the city of Rochester. Thank you. Doris Gates, and um, I won't reiterate what most of them have said, but I am against this partnership. Um, once I learn more, then I need to, to educate myself. I think we need to educate the citizens of Rochester and do them a justice by doing that. Um, I'm only one taxpayer, but shame on me if I just sit in them silent and don't, and just let this happen. I want you to know that I, Doris Gates, a taxpayer and a citizen of the United States, am not in favor of this partnership. I have opened my eyes and I see the road that we are going down and I'm not happy. Our property, uh, as property owners, one day we'll, we will be required to abide by the policies and regulations established by the Sustainable Communities Initiative, which is run by not elected officials but appointed officials. Shame on us. So let's not go down that road. Thank you. Mayor, all the members of the council, Cliff Newton. I did attend the Scrapper Metro Metropolitan Planning Organization last Friday, and I did listen to Matt uh, Sullivan, who gave a brief overview and readily admitted they didn't know what they were going to do. Um, this is not an advisory document. The document uh, does have a list of mandatory outcomes. If this was a state level, nothing would be done until you got all the information. I don't see how you can do anything but turn this down until you have all the information. One thing that is becoming apparent, that the carrot that's attached to strings, the strings are attached to an 800 pound gorilla, who's ready to come into Rochester. And that gorilla is HUD, uh, the EPA, and the DOT. 